The Kawasaki STX nameplate has been prolific for nearly 30 years. Now, with the aging STX 160, what can Kawasaki Corporate do to take this jet ski to the next level? This is the Kawasaki STX-160, the flagship of Kawasaki's mid-range jet ski segment. But where did Kawasaki go wrong when they released this new ski in 2020? Unfortunately, this ski fails to compete with the marketplace on multiple fronts. And in this video, I'm going to tell you my top four reasons why I think the STX fails and what Kawasaki can do to make it more competitive for the next iteration. Now don't get me wrong, I think the STX-160 is a great looking ski. I think it's got a durable and reliable hull and a proven drivetrain and engine. It just needs, well, watch and see. So Kawasaki's first mistake was failing to include an electronic reversing system on the STX. Kawasaki introduced their KSRD system in 2022 with the release of the redesigned 2022 Kawasaki Ultra 310 jet ski. This is functionality that absolutely is standard across the industry and Kawasaki needs to have this functionality on their STX line if they want to compete at all with Yamaha and Sea-Doo. Kawasaki absolutely dropped the ball when they released the new STX without including a full functioned, full color display like the one they launched with the 2022 Ultra 310. Controlled by an innovative jog dial, this display is fast, it's crisp and clear, it's easy to control with or without gloves on, you don't have the issues that touchscreen displays have. I think this setup would be perfect on the STX exactly like they have it on the Ultra 310 and new Ultra 160s. Another big shortcoming of the STX lineup is Kawasaki's failure to include electronic trim control on any of the models. I get leaving a base model without trim, but the STX 160 LX top of the range trim should include electronic trim. All right, so we've talked about what would amount essentially to tech features. But Kawasaki can't compete on tech. They need to compete on pure, raw horsepower. And that's with the STXR variant of the STX160. I think that the existing Ultra 310 platform would fit right in to the STX160 hull. K-Speed and Cowie Performance have both shown that it's possible. So why hasn't Kawasaki Corporate caught on? As the 310 platform starts to age, it's going to be more and more difficult for them to catch up with this. I mean, Sea-Doo's already released a 325. So what if Kawasaki was really innovative and included these patents here for their new liquid-cooled turbo in an STX platform? How cool would that be? I mean, I'd line up to buy one. The funny thing is that the features on this 26-year-old Kawasaki STX 1100 are not all that different than features on a brand new 2024 Kawasaki STX-160. I get Kawasaki's commitment to durability and reliability, but you don't have to choose that over innovation. You can have both. Kawasaki is a company that can do anything. The builders of the world's most prolific motorcycles and the inventor of the original jet ski. What started as a shipbuilding company continues to this day, building some of the world's largest freight liners and cargo ships and the massive diesel engines that power them. Kawasaki builds rockets and space capsules, and even the trains for the New York City subway system. So tell me this, why can't they blow the competition out of the water with a reliable, durable, and innovative machine unlike anything out there? Well. They did it in 1973, and they surely can do it again. Kawasaki, the ball is in your court. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more exclusive jet ski content only on JD's Waterworld.